All right, this video is on section 3.1 frequency distributions. So we're going to start talking about how to start organizing that data. So up until now, we've talked about the different how to classify data, um, quantitative versus qualitative. And I did give you guys some insight on the fact that we were learning how to classify data um, so that we could organize the data and put it into properly displayed graphs, um, depending on the type of data we were working with. So in this section, we're really going to focus on the table. And then as chapter three progresses, we will take a look at tables for categorical data, which is this section. There'll be a section about uh, quantitative data and frequency distributions, and then all the graphs that go along with them. So a frequency distribution is a summary technique that organizes data into classes and provides in tabular form a list of the classes along with the number of observations in each class. So really, we're just listing each category and the counts of which um, are applied to each category. And then we can continue to do other types of calculations that are helpful to analyzing the data. So the procedure would be to choose the classifications or list the categories and then count the number in each one of those classes. So, for example, Lewis, Harris and Associates Incorporated conducted a poll of 1250 adults to determine how Americans grade the school system. There were 24 questions in the original survey, producing a total of 30,000 pieces of data. That's a lot of data. Without some way of summarizing, this data would not be um, usable. Think about it. If you have 30,000, if I asked you what's your favorite color and you have 30,000 responses of all colors, you're going to be looking, it's called raw data when you first collect it. It's, it's messy, it's not organized, and there's no way that you can just snap your fingers and come up with a stat like, oh, pink is obviously the best color or the most popular color. Because 30,000 different responses, it's not that easy to, to view and to look at. So that's why we need things like frequency distribution tables and graphs. And the summary tables are much more informative than looking at 1,250 observations for each question. So here we are. We have a question in general. How would you rate the quality of American public schools rated from excellent to, to poor and not sure? And we've summarized the 1,250 responses by counting how many of those responses said excellent, it was 462, how many were pretty good, 288, and so on. So remember, we can apply a mode. If I asked you what is the mode of this categorical data, this qualitative data, you would look for the most frequent response, and that would be excellent. So excellent is the mode for this question. Another question, how serious is a lack of parental involvement with a child's education? Very serious, put to poor, we're not sure. Again, you have the counts, which is called frequency. So they're synonyms, frequency and count, they mean the same thing. And your mode would be very serious. In the next two tables, relative frequency distributions are calculated. In those tables, the frequencies are converted into percentages. These are defined as relative frequencies, part over the whole, just like a fraction. So you take the frequency and you divide by the total number of responses that you have in order to get what part of the whole is that category holding. Okay, there are valuable um, in assessing the data quickly in terms of um, making a quick factor statement. So take a look at the same two tables, but this time we took the counts and divided by 1250. So if you recall, let's go back real quick. Excellent, there was 462 out of 1250 responses. So we would take 462, divide it by 1250, and that's where we get 0.37. In order to change a relative frequency into a percent, you take the decimal place, well, technically you're multiplying by 100, the two zeros tell you, okay, I'm multiplying, that means the decimal place is gonna move to the right, and that's how we get 37% of the responses said excellent 
when rating the quality of American public schools. A little less than a quarter said pretty good. Less than 20% are only fair or poor and 4% said they're not sure. Okay, we come over here to the second question and remember there was 700, count of 700 responses for very serious. 700 divided by 1250. And we get the relative frequency 0.56. We move that decimal place two places to the right to get the percentage, which is typically how we would speak when we are referring to something. Normally, we don't say, oh, 0.56 of the people believe it is very serious um, to have lack of parental involvement, blah, 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 blah. That's not normally how we talk. We talk 56% of those who were surveyed believe it's very serious, blah, blah, blah. So think of the relative frequency as being the statistical value and the percentage being more like the English translation. And that kind of holds true when we start talking about probability. Our probabilities are going to exist between zero and one. Essentially, they're really relative frequencies just like these. So the probability of a person responding that um, it's very serious, there's a 56% chance that they'll respond that way. Um, the probability is actually 0.56, but the percentage is our English translation. It's how we speak and translate things. Now, the poll also reveals that the lack of parental involvement with a child's education is considered very serious or somewhat serious by 82% of the adults who took a poll. Now, where did they get that statistic? Well, they took 56 and added it to 26 in order to get to the 82. Um, so that's why they are talking about two different categories. We just add them together if we want the total percentage who uh, responded with those categories. Summarizing qualitative data using a frequency distribution table or a relative frequency distribution table allows the researcher to make conclusions about the data without having to view each observation. Okay, so let's go through another example, step by step. The very first step you would have to do is collect the raw data. So let's say, I just pulled this off the internet. <laughs> it was a random tally, but I thought it was cute. Let's say that I asked some kids in, I don't know, first grade, what their favorite animal was, and I gave them the options between cat, dog, elephant, and bear. We have a lot of bears now roaming around, so why not? Um, and it, I tally them up and we have four cats. We have nine children who selected dog. We have three children who said elephant was their favorite animal and two said it was the bear. Now in total, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine plus nine, there's 18 total children that were surveyed. And this is called raw data because it's just tallying is the initial collection of the data. Then you would want to put it into a frequency table. So let me actually end the show so that I can. Uh, I wanted to actually do it with you. I didn't want it to be already done. So when we add this column up, we get a total of 18. The relative frequency, we are going to take the part and divide it by the whole. Okay, so 4 eighteenths is the relative frequency, but typically we like to write these as decimals. And I prefer four decimal places because then it, I can really see what's happening. So I am going to put that in here. And this one's going to be 9 over 18. Well, that one's clearly 0.5. 3 out of 18. So 3 divided by 18. And we get... 0.1667, if I'm rounding. 2 out of 18 gives us the decimal 0.1111. Okay, and what should all these add up to? Well, they should add up to one whole. Okay, that is the point is that these are all parts to one whole. Okay, so percents, I now I'm going to take this decimal point and move it over two places to the right. So 22.22% of the children uh, surveyed said cat was their favorite animal. 
50% of children surveyed said dogs were their favorite animal. That is really no surprise because that's the most popular pet. Uh, I would have expected cat actually to be a bit higher. 16.67% of the children surveyed said elephant was their favorite animal and 11.11% of the children said that bear is their favorite animal. And if we've done this correctly, we should come out to 100%. Now, it is possible that your, your percent, so your relative frequencies are off by a, a very small margin. Like for example, it may add to 0.99999 or 1.001. It would only be off by a thousandth of a decimal um, because it depends on how many times we round it up and round it down. If we round it more up than down, then we might be off by one um, or vice versa. So it is possible that they don't add up exactly because of rounding but they will never be off by just more than just one. So if you get 1.002 or 0.9998, then you did something wrong in your rounding. Okay, and that is building a very basic frequency table. These are the, the most common uh, columns in a frequency table, although there are others like midpoint and cumulative frequency. Um, but these are the most useful columns in my opinion. And this is for categorical qualitative data. So that concludes 3.1.